Hey, good day everybody. Hope you guys are living life to your fullest. Alright, so as in the thumbnail description, this is a gun clean video and how to clean your gun. More specifically, those striker fire guns. Alright, um, I do not need to go into very specific models of striker fire guns because they all kind of operate off of the same type of uh, premise. So, <clears throat> anyways, let's get into what goes into a good cleaning kit. All right, first off, let's talk about solvents. All right, so I have a bottle of solvent here. Uh, now, it works so well, it took off its own label. But this is the Breakthrough uh, Battleborn solvent. Uh, it works pretty good. Now, what do solvents do? They take uh, grease and other oils and carbon away. Uh, they, they dissolve them, help get rid of them. Uh, so you spray that uh, solvent on there, uh, let's say <clears throat> down a barrel or, or wherever you see some carbon at, and let it sit for a few minutes. Then you agitate with a cleaning brush and then you wipe it off with a microfiber rag or, or any other type of clean cloth. All right, so solvents, uh, they're excellent at cleaning. Now they don't do anything else, they only clean. All right. Now, with that being said, do not use bore solvents on or all over your weapons. All right. Bore solvents are specifically meant for the bore of the barrels. All right. Where they try to get rid of uh, lead and copper and stuff like that specifically. And they use a little bit harsher or harsher chemicals that can wear off the finish of your firearm, all right? So if you use a harsher chemical on this, it can start stripping this uh, coating off of it, okay? And there is a lot of that uh, that I've seen throughout the years. So be very cognizant of uh, solvents. Make sure it's not a bore solvent. All right, <clears throat> next is your CLPs, all right? Uh, that is your uh, cleaner, lubricant, and protectant. Uh, this one right here is, uh, again, our product through, uh, or from Breakthrough, uh, just about, yeah, most of these uh, products are all Breakthrough. All right, so CLP. Um, you could uh, use Balisol, Break Free. Like I said, this stuff is Breakthrough. Uh, all of that, all those CLPs, they all kind of do the same thing. They clean, lubricate, and protect. Uh, now, they usually don't do either one of those uh, uh, really, really effectively uh, or really well compared to, let's say, like if you want a cleaner, then you get a solvent because this will clean a gun better than this. But if you want to, let's say, lubricate and protect a gun, this can do it too. Or, wait, there's more you can get a dedicated lubricant and protect it, all right? So, you could use a solvent to clean and then just a lubricant and protect it to uh, uh, put on all your components after it's done. Or, if you really wanna go minimalist, you just use a CLP of some sort. Like I said, I don't really care which brand. Uh, like. Uh, the break free is the one that the military uses, but it kind of stinks. And personally, I like the uh, breakthrough a little bit more. All right, moving on. This is called a boar snake. Uh, this one's uh, for nine mil and 308. Boar snakes are awesome. You just uh, put that through your barrel once or twice and your barrel is clean. It's easy. Uh, so this is an absolute must for me. And I like it because they're really small. No more having to get all those rods and different end brushes, and especially those metal end brushes are really harsh to a barrel. Uh, they have some uh, wire brush things here, but, uh, but they're not too bad, uh, especially compared to some of the other ones I've seen out there that actually just screw straight onto the metal rods. And this, it can go anywhere. Uh, so uh, that's a good piece of kit. All right, your AR-15 toothbrush. This will get in just about any area that you need to, uh, 
as far as clean your weapon. So it's about $1.50 or something. All right, then a microfiber rag to wipe everything off. All right, so uh, like I said, I like the breakthrough products. Uh, they usually have little kits where you get a little solvent thing, CLP, maybe one of these types of bottles, and it comes with a rag, and I think they even come with these little toothbrushes. So you can get those pretty cheap. Okay, now what things to stay away from? I would say gun grease. Uh, it has its uses, it does. However, it can also gum up a weapon as well if you're not applying it correctly. And it does pick up a lot of dirt and and there's no way to flush it out of the system. All it does is just kind of collect that dirt, dust, and, and carbon. So it kind of, it, it turns more into a paste than anything. Um, like I said, it's good for, let's say if you have a hammer fire gun, right, like 1911 or or the uh, SIG 226 or something like that, or, or the old Beretta M9. Now, if you're doing some uh, sear and hammer work with those guns, that'd be a good time to put just a little bit of grease on there. But uh, as far as striker fire pistols, I would tend to stick away from it. All right, um, do not mix petroleum and plant-based products. All right, so what I say is, whatever brand you like, just stick with it. Like I said, breakthrough works for me. Or if you don't wanna to have to worry about different types of solvents and, and different other types of lubes, just stick with one CLP, all right? I don't care what it is. Um, like you don't wanna be mixing up a bunch of different oils because the petroleum uh, based oils like your Lucas gun oil uh, and your break free uh, heavy petroleum based products, they're good but if you, let's say you want to put something new in there, right? Like frog lube as a plant-based material, it will start gumming up. Those materials or chemicals do not mix well with one another. And speaking of frog lube, it is good stuff. Uh, I do not recommend it to new shooters uh, only because if you apply it incorrectly, right? If you're using all the products and you apply it incorrectly, you can uh, actually induce a hell of a lot more malfunctions by getting a lot of gunk in places where you don't need to. However, if you actually do follow the instructions and use it uh, correctly, frog lube uh, is, uh, is a pretty good product. All right, motor oil. Um, motor oil can be used on guns as a, uh, as a protectant and lubricant. Um, and it does have its uses. However, I do not recommend it for your carry pistol. Number one, it kind of smells. Number two, uh, it when it leaks and when you're shooting it and everything, that stuff stains up your clothes like crazy, all right? And there's a bunch of other stuff that won't do that as much, all right? Like I said, such as this type of stuff. Pretty clear, uh, it doesn't mess up your clothes and for carry guns, unless you're doing a training course with the carry gun to where you're putting like, I don't know, 800 rounds down in two days, um, I just don't see why you would need to use anything more than you know your regular CLPs or this. Like going on to motor oil, that's a little bit thicker. Motor oil is really meant for applications such as uh, machine guns, like that works great on 50 cals and 240s and, and even saws. Uh, and yes, on M4s, uh, especially if you're doing a training course where there's a high round count, all right? Uh, how, and, you know, if we're in some type of battle fatigues or something like that, then I don't really care about oil uh, getting on that. But as far as my everyday carry, I don't want, uh, you know, Mobile One or Pens Oil uh, leaking on my clothes and, and smelling it up. So that's, that's my rant on that. All right, so... Uh, with that being said, let's talk about where not to put oils on. All right, hope everyone can see this okay. When it comes to this part, all right, this is your extractor. And here you go, you see the claw part of the extractor right here. Now, If you put too much oil up and around here, 
oil can get uh, back inside where the uh, extractor is and can get back up oh sorry and can get back in here and you don't want a lot of oil there because grime dust and stuff like that can build up and there's really no way for it to get out of there unless you uh, actually take the extractor all the way out all right and that's a little bit more than your basic field strip but uh, but when cleaning it try to use more of a dryer brush and just lightly go I, I like just going from top to bottom not back up top especially with the red dot all right and this way you can remove that carbon away from the extractor claw there and it's easy peasy and you don't have to worry about oil getting up in there also the firing pin hole let's see if we can get a better shot of that there we go all right do not put oil right here on the firing pin hole all right because there's no way for that oil to get out of there and carbon that gets in there and dust that gets in there it's just going to mix up with that oil since that oil has no way to really be cleaned out until you do like a full disassembly and so it can mess up and hinder your firing pin engagement there all right so when it comes to the breech face i like using a dry brush and again just going down and maybe dry part of the rag and just wiping down okay so this way you're you're not putting more stuff back into that firing pit hole <clears throat> all right and then third safety plunger area do not put all right do not put a lot of uh, oil and stuff around in here why because it will seep down into the safety plunge area and it can actually obstruct your safety pin all right or not your safety pin but the safety pin plunger in its movement going up and down when depressed by the uh, trigger bar or, or whatever mechanism your particular gun's using now like i said for striker fire guns most of them work on this type of premise all right they may look slightly different on yours like your glocks or uh smith and wessons or uh walters whatever however they all use pretty much the same type of premise so don't use uh oil on those three areas you can wipe it down with a rag all right go over it with a dry brush or whatever but just make sure there's not a lot of oil or anything going down there all right <clears throat> how to clean a barrel barrels are pretty easy all right especially with that boar snake if you want before you even put the boar snake through there you can use a little bit of the solvent and spray it in there let it sit for a few seconds or a few minutes and then use your uh, boar snake and just run through there once or twice and then just use your rag to make sure the uh, feed ramp here is good and clean all right so make sure there's no carbon on there and you can use your brush for the top parts here if you wish so this way everything is good to go and clean and then just reapply some uh, oil lubricant around it all right just a very small thin film and i would definitely apply especially on these uh browning type action barrels a little bit of oil about right here uh just so it kind of helps uh when the slide goes back and forth on there okay all right <clears throat> next oh uh, <clears throat> now should you try to take any and all copper fouling out of your barrel all right the inside of your barrel um you know i kind of posed this question myself uh, a few years back you know on on what the best practice with that is you shouldn't have carbon stuck up in there or huge deposits of lead uh however uh copper is not necessarily a bad thing and believe it or not i learned this a while back from another guntube channel it's called gun blue 
490. Uh, Gun Blue 490. Uh, he's an older gentleman and he seems to have a, a lot of knowledge uh, about guns uh, throughout his lifetime. And what he was talking about makes complete sense. So he was talking about inside the barrels. Uh, although it looks smooth to the naked eye, uh, you know, if you looked at the inside of it under uh, a microscope, uh, you would be able to see a little bit of, of what he said, like hills and valleys or, uh, now I, I would imagine as something kind of like pitting, but without the rust, right? Um, and what copper does when it goes down that barrel, it kind of does fill in those gaps uh, as it's going down, it's just kind of deposited. But that's not really a big deal whatsoever, and especially if you're just using something like, uh, you know, CLP and a good boar snake to get the carbon, the lead, and, and grime out of here, uh, that's gonna be more than good enough for your barrel, and it's not going to degrade your barrel at all. All right, so uh, I, would, I would even stick away from board cleaners, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, use a regular solvent, not like just the bore solvent, or uh, some regular CLP, and use bore snakes, all right? Uh, served me well throughout the years, never had an issue. All right, <clears throat> where to clean on the slide? Uh, pretty much everywhere, just not the, just not the three places I told you before. Okay, don't put oil on the extractor. Uh, don't put oil to where it will seep down in that safety plunger. Let's see if it'll focus. Yep. Yeah. Don't put where it'll uh, be seeping in that safety plunger, and don't be putting it where the firing pin hole is. Other than that, you could put oil uh, all around this thing, a very light coat, anywhere you want, but uh, where you should focus at is really just the rails and wherever you see a little bit of uh, wear marks. So as you can see, there's a little bit of silverish wear in there, uh, and that's normal. You're gonna see that in pretty much all of your uh, striker fire guns are, uh, browning, tilting action type barrels, and that's fine. Just put a little bit of oil on that, and that will be okay. And there you go. Uh, that's that's what we put on as far as the slide. As far as the lower is concerned, all you have to do is just put a little bit on the rails. All right. On the rails themselves. Um, I would not put, like, a lot of oil here, all right, where the... Uh, other striker and sear components are like you can go over it with a brush real quick all right but don't be pouring a lot of stuff down there okay uh, anything that can collect grime and and lint and, and stuff like that just go over it real quick with the brush and rag and that should be good to go <clears throat> and then just use your brush and clean out your guide rods all right then other than that that's easy um, now how often Oh, uh, let's back up real quick. How to clean a magazine. You don't want to put a lot of oil on these magazines at all. Uh, to be honest with you, <clears throat> after I clean the gun off, all I do is I just use a rag and just kind of go over the magazine like such. All right, so, and you know, usually it's unloaded, uh, but it's my, uh, uh, carry ammo here and then uh, the feed lip uh, on top uh, I will brush that off and then I will also use this rag you know dry part of it just make sure all the carbons off of it and just wipe the magazine down uh, just so this way uh, your the lactic acid or not lactic acid but the acid from your fingerprints and, and other things uh, they're just not sticking up on there and uh, and trying to eat through whatever uh, coating you have. Now, most magazines, that's not an issue. Uh, these newer SIG ones, uh, for some reason it is. Don't know why, but the coating's not as strong. So that's what I do to help do that preventive maintenance. Okay, so how often should you do a filled strip and clean? All right, so if you're not firing the thing, uh, I would just do a quick wipe down. I wouldn't even get a brush, I would just use a rag, all right? I'd just do a quick wipe down about once a week, 
or sorry, once every two weeks. Um, just to make sure there's, you know, no big deposit of lints and in any of the areas that it needs to be. So if you just uh, field strip it down to how it's broken down like here, oh, i get that later, and just wipe it down with a rag, <clears throat> uh, that'll be just fine. Uh, now, if you're going to the range, anytime you go to the range and you come back, I would say do a really quick uh, field strip and clean. Um, you could just use CLP or whatever, use a brush in just a few areas and your rag just do a quick once over. You don't need to do anything detailed, but you should at least be doing that because the longer carbon sits on an area, uh, the more it can build up. And especially if, uh, let's say after you fire, all right, uh, you go to the range, you fire a hundred rounds, right? Just to get some practice in. And this is your carry gun. And then you're, uh, you put it next to your body because you're carrying it and you're sweating. Okay, well then that, can cause moisture around there. And to be honest with you, uh, you just don't want carbon sitting around everywhere uh, for a long time. So if you can get it off early, then just do that. And then let the CLP kind of sit on there and kind of do its work, all right? It can help further uh, break that down over time. <clears throat> all right, and how often should you do a full disassembly? Not just uh, a field strip, but to where you're taking your uh, firing pin out and an extractor and all that stuff. I would say maybe about once a year, uh, or if you fire like, I don't know, let's say three or 4,000 rounds or something like that, if that be if that comes before a year, I probably do it around that time, uh, just to get all that built up carbon and everything out of there. Um, or if there's any unexplained malfunctionings occurring, all right, so you can take a look at that. All right, can you overclean a weapon? Actually, the real answer is no, you cannot overclean a weapon. What you can do is use the wrong crap on it, <clears throat> like using a steel brush, not like a, a copper brush or something, but like a, a steel brush uh, that's meant to get rust off of, uh, I don't know, nails or something and use it on your weapon. Yes, I've seen that before. Um, and then using that uh, bore cleaner solvent on uh, all over surfaces where it shouldn't really be used on. Like I said, it goes inside the barrels, not everywhere else. And so I've seen people actually do those two at the same time. And so that's what ruins guns. This little nylon brush that's you know, not hard at all for your metal components and, you know, CLP, you can do that twice a day, every day for 10 years, and that's not going to hurt your weapon whatsoever. All right. It's not harsh at all. Uh, using the wrong stuff on it is what is considered over cleaning. All right. And, and I got a ton of stories about that, but I'll just share one with you and then I'll let you guys go because it's a longer video than I expected. So in the military, we have to, or we had to turn in weapons to where uh, the armor or whoever was inspecting it could not detect any carbon whenever they're, you know, swiping their fingers all on it, uh, which I think is the wrong answer because what that did was, uh, it didn't encourage people to clean their weapon. Well, no, it encouraged them to take shortcuts by, we're gonna, just gonna use uh, hot soap and water <laughs> when no one's looking. Uh, we're gonna use bore cleaners. We're going to use stuff that should not be used on weapons and that strips the coatings off of them. And then <clears throat> we're gonna turn it in and dry. Okay, so now your weapon has been abused by using the wrong chemicals on it. Uh, it's not protected by, uh, by any type of CLP or anything. And yeah, now you're exposing it to all sorts of potential rust and, and everything else and premature wear. So the uh, military was absolutely terrible about that. So when people that are former military say, well, we just overcleaned our weapons. No, you didn't overclean your weapon. What you did was use the wrong stuff to clean your weapons. 
Um, all right, well, I hope everyone got something out of this. Uh, well, especially if you're uh, newer to the to the gun world and, and doing all this. All right, well, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments below. And uh, as a community, let's all help each other out. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.